Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. I am so excited to kick off the new year with a new series. We know our customers love having a project to look forward to for each month of the year. And this is called Tea and Cookies for Two. We love this, so much fun. Two placemats, identical, and we're going to be featuring a new cookie each month, recipes available. This is a cookie I made last night using my grandmother's sour cream sugar cookie recipe. Goodness knows where she got that from. <laughs> Probably somewhere in the late 1800s and it's just kept going uh, through the generations. In fact, I brought some extra cookies for the design team and they, the feedback I heard was, it tastes like something like it's a completely different type of sugar cookie. It's a little bit of sour cream in it. It's so great. And we're looking for a shortbread recipe for you as well. So we'll make those available. And hey, maybe you have a recipe you're willing to share with our viewers. By all means, put it in the comments. We're gonna have a lot of fun in this series. So basically how we're gonna run this each month is of course, it'll be very thematic. We're releasing the project for the month ahead. So we're in January right now filming for uh, projects for February. The kit will be going out to you in January. So you have plenty of time to make that. So you can display that. Maybe you can plan a date with a friend, maybe a relative, maybe uh, whomever. The ability to have that more intimate conversation, just one-on-one, -on -one, those are my favorite conversations. I love parties and all that, but it's more casual. I love the ability for just two placemats, two plates of cookies, maybe two uh, mugs of tea or coffee or whatever to just catch up on life. I feel like after COVID, we're still catching up on conversations and face-to-face -face meetings we didn't get to have during that very unusual pandemic time. So very, lots going on. You will be, I expect the placemats will be the same size each month. There'll be a full color step-by-step -step, uh, pattern, of course. If you want to be using your own fabrics from home, you can just grab that pattern. By all means, you can do that. If you want the convenience of a kit, which will, of course, include everything that you're seeing here, including the pre-fused laser cut scallops that are going to be on each one of the placemats, just pick up the kit and your pattern will be included as well. The only thing that you'll need to add is a little bit of fusible fleece or batting. We did add that to the middle of this. This is a self-binding placemat, our number one viewed video on uh, YouTube for 2023. People love self-binding placemats. They get to skip that kind of cumbersome process of traditional binding. So I'm very happy to unpack that. Because it's the very first in a series, it's a longer video. We're gonna take you through each step of this. In subsequent months, we'll just be focusing on the patchwork. But today, we're focusing not only on the patchwork, a little bit of the applique, what are all these notions on the table, how are we dealing with the fusible fleece, what's the self-binding you're talking about. It's a longer video, so grab a snack, maybe a cookie, <laughs> maybe tea, coffee, or whatever's your drink of choice. Let's be here for a while, and when you get your kit, by all means, just go to a certain section, watch the video, and stop, and do, and just, you get the idea, so that we can have a lot of fun together, and you can see how these really are very achievable, but you need to follow the steps very carefully. All right, so you can see we're, we have patchwork over here, just a touch of applique there. We're sewing those together, and then we're adding our backing, wrapping it around to the front, again, called a self-binding placemat. So let's start unpacking our patchwork. We'll just talk about the notions as they're being used. I think that's more effective that way. One thing that we do know that whether you're using your fabric at home or whether you're using your fabric in your kit, of course, that's been folded, it's been shipped to you, it's gonna come out with some folds in it. Grab some sizing, grab that iron and put it on a full hot setting and go ahead and get everything perfectly pressed. You always wanna do that before you begin the process of cutting. Patchwork tells me that I need to have a fresh blade in the rotary cutter. In fact, last night, when I was just going through this one more time before I filmed, the rotary cutter I grabbed for was very dull. 
And I found myself pushing and I'm thinking, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm the very one constantly advocating to change the blade. So we did that. And of course the cuts are now coming out clean. So if you're like, gosh, this feels like a lot of work. First clue, go ahead and change the blade. We have the single packs, the two packs or the five packs. Pick whatever's right for you. Leave it in your sewing room. So when you're inspired to use a quilt at midnight and you need to change the blade, you have it. Looking at the heart quilt block, we're gonna start right in the middle with some simple squares and simply make a four patch. So let me just put that here and we'll just kind of step our way through this. So we have our squares and notice how our fabric, our pink here is directional. So if you want to have your stripes going up and down, the first thing I like to do when I am doing any kind of patchwork is lay out my site picture. Is this what I'm expecting? Is this what's in my photo? If it is, now we proceed. Of course, we're placing right side together and right side together. Because we're doing precise piecing on this, and because we really want our block to come out square, having aids on your sewing machine may be very beneficial. It is for me. I am the first to admit my miss in quilting is sewing more than a quarter inch. My blocks are almost consistently under the size they're supposed to be when they're fully assembled. I'm like, I gotta fix this, right? What, why is a bad habit of mine? I have diagonal seam tape on the um, sewing machine as well as a seam guide. The seam guide setter, and I'll touch on this just a bit. If you wanna check out this product, we have that Notion video to check out. This helps you sew what's called a scant quarter where you're just slightly under a quarter of an inch. And once you've set that, you now kind of create this ridge with this. And I have that on my machine already. I've already set myself up for this. If that's you and your blocks are consistently coming in short, grab this. And you might wanna grab the diagonal seam tape, but that seam guide setter and those, those guides are really the one that keep me true. So let's that head over. Let's just use these products. Even though I have sewed some of that ahead of time, let's just, let's just start using some of these products so you're seeing how they're used. Let's get the iron heating up to full hot. The cookie, put the cookie aside until after your place mat's done and then you can eat the cookie, right? <laughs> okay, let's head over to the machine. We could actually put a pin in, a patchwork pin. It's not a big area. I don't think a patchwork pin is necessarily critical, but they will be soon. I might as well just put one in right now. Make sure I've got my directional fabric lined up correctly. Yes, I do. And let's start using those seam guides right now to start really just being very disciplined about that. This is the diagonal seam tape. I love that it helps me start getting lined up. This is my center line. That's the quarter inch to the right, quarter inch to the left. And once you have that, and I used my seam guide setter here. If you wanna sew with a scant, you'll use the seam guide setter. If you wanna sew with a regular quarter of an inch, I just set that right along that edge. It's a ridge. I can't push past it without really um, pushing. So I am just going to get started here lining up right along that ridge, keeping me true and not defaulting to that habit of sewing more than a quarter of an inch. In order to have something called interlocking seams, let me show you the back of this. We press toward the pink each time both times, I should say, each time, both times, same thing. But you want to choose, you could press toward the white if you want, that's fine. We chose to press toward the darker fabric, which was the pink. That's a good default habit. If you don't, if maybe you're new to patchwork, maybe you don't have any habits yet. That's why I wanna to mention to you things to start thinking about. What this does for us by pressing our seam to the same color is that when we bring them together right there, there's literal, they lock in. It's just like, boom. That's what we're looking for. Right there. In goes the pin. 
here. That's the most important part. Then we'll pin those corners. Right? Go to the machine, quarter inch seam allowance. Then the next thing that we did is we simply pressed to one side, okay? So our four patch is now locked in. That's the very beginning here. Let's move on to the top and bottom of the center uh, section of our heart. And you can see that really it's the same thing repeated, but let's go over this in detail. So let me bring that out here. This is where we're going, and here's how we're going to get there. We're going to start off with our rectangle. I can feel there's sizing in this fabric. I love that. It just gives it a stability. There's less happening, less stretch. Notice there's very little stretch here. Sizing does that for you. We're simply going to draw a line corner to corner with a straight edge, and let me grab I'm going to actually do that on two of those, corner to corner. We place this in right in that corner. Pin. We'll sew directly on that line. You could start here. Here's what I have found. Sometimes when there's a sharp point right there, it tends to dive right inside that throat plate, kind of the feed dogs. For that reason, I'm going to turn it around and start here. There's just more kind of girth. There's more stability here. I'm gonna start sewing from this point to this point. Give a press. I like to press to the outside, make sure I'm happy with what I'm seeing before I trim away the quarter inch. So you can see we're beginning to build that. It still has a nice 90 degree corner. We sew right on the line. This quarter inch dash line here, we will simply place on our stitch line. That automatically puts you a quarter inch to the right of where you just sewed. So we have half of our flying geese unit done. Same here on the other side, pin. Using the same logic, would you start sewing here or would you start sewing here? Choose this side, right? You've got all of this. This, this isn't diving into a feed dog. You've got this whole edge, but this just might. The other thing some people like to do is use a starter strip. A little, just a little piece of fabric kind of folded over. This is, this is probably a little too small to be a starter strip. But the idea is you get this machine sewing and then sew right onto your project. You could do that, but start sewing here. Let's just go do that. Once again, let's press. Press the outside before we trim anything. Check, are we happy? Is it a nice 90 degree corner? Yes, lift the flap, quarter inch line goes on our stitch line, trim. Trim away another thread. And we now have the upper portion of our, the center portion of this. And as I mentioned, the bottom portion so that's that, let me put that over here. Same story, right? Back of these fabrics, draw the diagonal, draw the diagonal, putting this in the corner, sew and flip, in the corner, sew and flip, here we are. This is the center portion. And we can sew that together at this point if we want, but let's go ahead and keep um, doing the patchwork first and getting all the elements together, and then we'll sew the block together. Just like we did here, for the top and the bottom, this portion, which is just, let's look at that. This is just a rectangle and a rectangle. Same story, we're drawing our lines, right? And we can see this is gonna go here. 
we're sewing on the line and we're going to flip. Are we happy? Yes, we trim. Same thing here, right? This and this, draw the line, boom, repeat. That's how you're going to make the two of these. And that's what these look like here. Nothing mysterious about this. Pressing to the outside both times. So you have your upper portion on the left and on the right. And then for the bottom, easy peasy. These are just squares. So now we're ready to do our assembly. Let me clean up just a bit and let's move on to sewing our patchwork together. Now we're ready to assemble this. And of course our pattern gives you specific instructions on how to do that. Let's just assemble the center portion, our side portion, and then we'll sew those together. We have our center seam here and we know we have this here. One of my favorite parts about looking at the backside is that little bullseye is exactly where that needle should pass to hit that quarter inch seam. And we'll put a pin here. And of course in our corners. I like to make the trip to the sewing machine efficient. My ironing board at home is not right next to my um, sewing machine. There's just not room in my house to do that. So we also know that this is gonna get sewn to the bottom. So let's make our trip efficient. Let's flip that right side together. And you would think I might wanna sew from this side, but notice the seam is pressing down. I'm gonna sew on this side, why? Because if I sew on this side, that seam could potentially roll back. It's on the underside, I cannot see it. Think of this as babysitting, right? You're babysitting this seam to make sure it behaves itself. And it's going downward in the direction that you're traveling. So that's a great thing. Let's keep that on the right side. And we can do the same thing here. In this instance, look, if I have this on this side sewing, I have to worry about that seam rolling as I stitch. So in this instance, I'm gonna sew on this side. When I was an early quilter, I didn't even understand seam allowances. And as I've grown in my experience, I realize seam allowances and how you sew and what side you sew from do help um, really kind of uh, almost ensure your success because you're not getting rolled seams and seam ripping and this, that, and the other thing. Let's go sew our quarter inch seams and we'll start assembling that quilt block. The pins I'm using right now are patchwork pins. That's a whole nother thing. I, when I was, again, an early quilter, I'm like, ah, pins are pins are pins. Another discovery, right? They're not. I think the beginning pins I had were very, the heavy, the gauge was very heavy. When I'd put them in, the fabric would almost pucker up. These patchwork pins made in Jap Japan are incredible and they have a glass head. Later, when we start working with our fusible fleece, things become more bulky because I don't want to bend the patchwork pins We'll be moving on to something called cool pins. But again, as we get to that, I'll touch on, remind you of why we're using those pins and why did we stop using our patchwork pins. Let's press toward our plain, simple square since the fabric's going to want to move in that direction anyway. Let me show you what I'm talking about. See how there's a lot of seams? There's a seam here. The fabric does not want to press back on itself. So we're going to absolutely press in the direction the fabric is naturally wanting to go, which is downward. And we have our left and our right. And let's look here at the top, right? And I believe we pressed ours toward the middle, our four patch. It looks like we did. Let's continue with that. Warming up the seams, another thing I'd really kind of adopted later in my quilting experience, it's kind of like anything. If you warm up something, it's more pliable to move in the direction you want it to. Not just fabric, taffy, metal, 
whatever that is that you want to bend or you want to influence to move in a certain direction, heating that gives you a pliability that is desirable. Okay, so we have that and now we're simply sewing on our bottom portion. Looking at that here, I would sew from, see how this seam is, is here? If I come here, my presser, I have to kind of keep track of that seam and not let it roll. For that reason, I'm gonna sew on this side because that's gonna keep that seam going down. Get that sewn. Some people have asked, how do I know when to use a scant quarter? Jen, you talked about the scant quarter, but I never really know when to do it. My experience has been that if you know you tend to sew on the chunky side of a quarter and recognizing and acknowledging that when you fold this fabric over, there is a distance there. What is it, 132nd of an inch? Is it 1 164th? I don't know what it is, but I know it's, it's a distance. If that's you, you might want to scant, sew on a scant quarter. And the more pieces are in a block, the more I go that direction. The more I go that direction because I know my miss. All right, now that I have this like this, I want to show you something really cool that happened and we were very careful about our pressing. As we place this together, look at these seams. The white seam is going to the right. The red seam is going to my left, giving us interlocking seams again. Remember how I said seams are a thing. Seams are a thing. And if you can get interlocking seams, you want to do that every single time. I'm going to print, and right there is another seam. This seam's going down, that seam's going up. Beautiful. Let's take a look at that. Let's pin that. We absolutely want that to hit right there. That's our two most tender spots right now that we want to hit. Make everything else fit that. Okay, I'm going to go sew this one. I'm going to sew the other one and then we'll press those seams open. Now it's time to press seams open because we have so much equal bulk going on both sides now it's time to evenly distribute that. Let me get that sewn and pressed open and then we'll talk about adding our borders and then we'll do our applique and then the part that's gonna be the most involved will be the self-binding portion of our placemat. So our block is now ready for borders. Oh, so exciting. Okay, we have our top, actually our side borders first, right? Right side together. Definitely, definitely sew on the side with those seams. You have a lot you're keeping track of. Pin in the beginning, pin in the end, make everything else fit. Just plan on doing that. You can also pin down those seams so they don't want to roll back. At least they're less inclined to roll back. You're going to do the same on the opposite side. 
right? Oh, let me pin that a little better. Notice that came out just a touch right there. There we go. Of course, the same here, right side together. So and press to the outside and then simply add your top and bottom borders. No big surprise there, right? That, that part is not a mystery. If you've gotten this patchwork done, the borders are easy peasy. So let's set that aside for now. This side, why I'm the, one of the reasons people love to buy these kits is they don't have to trace the scallop. They don't have to get the heat and bond light. If you're working from home, you'll want to be sure to grab some fusible product. Uh, heat and bond light is what we tend to use. And you'll need to trace two of those scallops and cut those out very carefully. If you're receiving our kit, this will automatically come to you. There's the fusible papers on the back. Simply press as it releases, just like that. Just a dream, right? I love skipping all of the tracing and the, and the cutting, especially a scallop or a difficult shape. It never comes out as smooth as I want. I, and I want it to be as perfect as possible, just, just my nature. And we're off on our way, right? That's what part of our two-piece thread set is for. You would now take the thread and go ahead and stitch down that scallop on both pieces. Later on, we brought those back as we did a little bit of our top quilting and along our borders. But for now, it also plays a role to go ahead and stitch down that scallop on both pieces. Once you have that together, as you would suspect, right side together, and doesn't matter what side you sew from, I'll just go sew those together. And our next step will be getting some fusible fleece or batting. So whatever you're going to be using, go ahead and grab that and have that ready for the next step. So we'll press this toward our, you can see how, look at that. You could, this, it's telling you, press me toward the patchwork. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do that. Press toward our patchwork. So here we are so far. That is already way cute. Now we'll grab, we love fusible fleece. One of the reasons we love that is we don't have to use spray basted. I love just having contact, direct contact, but maybe you do a lot of long arm quilting or smaller projects, you have batting that absolutely works. We just like fusible fleece, but batting works just as beautifully. So you'll cut that out per the size and, and we're just making that a little bit bigger at this point and you can begin ironing that. Just know that you want to protect your iron from touching the fusible fleece if you're using a fusible product because it will stick to the bottom of, the, of your iron. I like to start that from the center and work my way out. And you can be very careful about avoiding that. You just have to be intentional about avoiding that. If you're concerned that you're going to get a little bit of a fusible product on there, you could grab an applique pressing sheet, a piece of muslin, we have parchment paper, whatever that is. In fact, I'll just use the parchment paper. We like to use this for projects that have hot glue. Um, I like to use it for point of view. Kaleidoscope was a recent video we just filmed with a lot of glue going down to a template and we discovered that it soaks through, of course, um, to your work surface. And it's a nice inexpensive way to protect either your mat, your iron, or whatever that is. You get the idea to go ahead and secure your patchwork and applique unit to whether it's fusible fleece, batting, or whatever you're doing at this point. Okay, we are down. 
Now we opted not to do our top quilting now, but we wanted to wait until the very end so that you're quilting all the way through to the back. So we, we won't be doing any top quilting now, but rather we're simply going to take our ruler and now just cut right along and kind of clean this up. So when I'm cutting, I am not following this edge like fishtailing. I'm saying, all right, I'm gonna set a ruler in the corner that is square in the corner, square here about right there, and I'm gonna give a cut. If I see a little bit of the fusible fleece here or batting, no problem. This is very forgiving. Don't worry if you've got your border goes all the way to the top here and dips down just a little bit, no problem. Remember, this is a self-binding placemat. This backing is gonna come around and cover up any imperfections you might have. If they're off really significantly, it could be a problem. But remember, a quarter of an inch of this is going to be covered up. So I like that. I like projects where I don't have to be stressed out about accuracy. Now, if you want to keep this as square as can be, you can absolutely run this along a line on your mat and a line on this mat as well, or you just go for it. Hey, what's the point of this project? Having something cute to invite a friend over and have a great conversation. <laughs> That's what we wanna do and maybe having something fun to eat as well. Just to connect with the people in our life that we care the most about. We'll square that up and we'll turn it again 90 degrees. Let's get that squared up. Scoot that down. And on the opposite side. Now we, by using our mat to help us square up, we know that we have something square. We have put a measurement in your pattern that says at this point, this should measure, let me see, uh, it should measure eight by 14. What if it measures less? Nobody cares, you're good. This is a very forgiving project. Look at this right here. Look, look how my border came here. It dives in just a touch. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Could I lift this up, kind of pull this away from my fusible fleece? and try to push it out, yes. Do I need to? No, but let me do that. If that bothers you, let's just iron it down again. That's what I love about the self-binding component. It really covers up a lot of those things, so you don't have to be perfect. Okay, now that you're here, this is the part that I would say is the least intuitive, but is one of the coolest features of this project, and customers love this. A lot of people don't like making traditional binding. They don't like making it. They don't like applying it. They don't like uh, merging the two ends in the, in the very end, flipping it around, and either stitching it down by hand or by machine. If that's you, you're going to love this process. Out comes our backing fabric, and here comes our fusible fleece. The first thing we're going to do is going to actually flip our project over and we're going to mark in our four corners. We're gonna use a friction pen. Now let's look at our ruler. Right here, I have a quarter inch dash line coming in and a quarter inch dash line coming in here. I'm just going to put those right in that corner, right in that corner, and I'm going to mark that place. This is going to be a start and stop point for us and is a very important step of this. We'll repeat that in all four corners. Okay, four corners are marked. Let's turn this so that the heart that's the upper, that's the up, uh, top side, that's the bottom side. Now we're going to find the midpoint. We're gonna mark the midpoint here, 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 and here. Easy peasy, you could either fold this in half 
and find the midpoint there and mark it or measure. Sometimes it's hard marking on that kind of ridge. You could measure that and say, okay, this is measuring about, what's well, just under 14 inches. So I'm going to measure just under seven inches at the midpoint. Flip it around to the other side, same story. Measure, measure. We'd like to think these are both the same. It looks like they are, because we used our mat to square up and be as square as we could be. And same on this side. Eight, beautiful. Four. Four. Important. Turn it back where the top of the heart is up here and the bottom is here. We're going to mark an opening at the very bottom of our project. That's about six and a half inches wide. So I'm gonna grab my ruler, knowing that six and a half, half of that would be three and a quarter. It doesn't have to be dead on at six and a half. That was a good measurement because we wanna have plenty of room to turn this through. These are just, I like to put little extras there. Like don't sew here, <laughs> don't sew here. That's gonna be where we turn through, okay? Put that aside for the moment and grab your backing fabric. Go ahead and get that pressed all the way out, cut it to the size as indicated. And we will once again mark our midpoints, right? Top, bottom, left and right. I'll go ahead and do that. Now that we have our backing, we have our piece top, make sure the top of the heart is at the top and we're going to align our mark on our fusible fleece with our backing and pin. This is when we switch to the cool pins. Remember how we know these are very special. These patchwork pins have the lower gauge and they can bend. I have done that and once they bend, I've tried to bend them back, forget it. Grab for the cooler, the cool pins. They're a thicker gauge meant for this mission here. I am now going to go ahead and actually switch out my thread to be red. Um, just because I, I want to now start getting in my mind, now we're working with red thread. We've got our red backing. What we're going to do when we get to the machine, I might as well just explain that, is this corner is where we begin. Needle down, stitching a quarter of an inch, and stopping at that corner. If you have a Bernina and you're sewing with a certain feet, there are markings on those feet to show you when you are a quarter inch. But for most people that are sewing on other types of machines, that corner is where you're gonna begin, sewing a quarter of an inch, ending right here. So let me go ahead and change out the thread and then we'll get started sewing our quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so we're ready to sew. I alluded to, if you are sewing on a Bernina, the foot I have in today is a 57D. I wanna point out the notching that I mentioned. There's a little bit of an indent there that's a quarter inch behind the needle, at the needle, and a quarter inch ahead. That makes it lovely. You, you don't have to, you don't have to pre-mark that. But most of the other machines I've ever seen don't really have that engineering. So that's why we mark those corners because that's how most people, um, machines are. All right, so let's get started. Sewing a quarter inch seam allowance. I have red in the top, red in the bobbin, We're going to start stitching and back stitch. This is your miter corner. There's stress in those miter corners. We're gonna be pushing them out with a point turner. So you wanna go forward just a touch and back up. We 
you want to stop in that corner. All right, now that we have that, we'll turn our project and we will bring this marking on the fusible fleece in line with the line on our backing fabric. And again, start pinning right there. Remember how we had that kind of those X's, you can't hardly see them anymore. <laughs> they kind of, kind of got a little bit blurred there. Now on this side, since that's our opening, we're sewing here, backstitch, stop, backstitch, just in here, just in here, leave this open, all right? Here to here, backstitch, sew backstitch, open, here, backstitch, sew backstitch. This self-binding technique is awesome. For all you people that really just hate doing binding, this was made for you. Right, so we have our two long sides. Now let's turn this 90 degrees. As we bring our side, short sides together, pin, pin right there, very important. This step is easiest if you turn this over to the back and you think of this as a triangle, we have to get this fabric out of the way, right? Because right now, if it's tucked inside here, we're gonna sew it down. It needs to get out of the way. And basically, if you think about this being almost a triangle on the back, if you see this kind of triangle, you're doing it right. That's a good sign. Make sure that fabric is out of the way. You're seeing a triangle. And if this is too much to hang on to, because we have to pin from the other side, you could use some wonder clips. You could even do a little bit of a pin. You're gonna switch that if you wanna do that, whatever that is, because we need to sew from the other side. If you just want to pin that just for an extra pair of hands. Now let's flip this over because this is the side we're sewing from. So we're running nice and smooth across the top. Let's pin that. I'm going to take that one out. And same here. Nice and smooth across the top. Okay, let me take that pin out of there. So you can see it looks like it's got these flaps out there. If you're seeing that, you're doing it right. Looks a little weird at first, but this means you're on the right track and you don't wanna feel anything, any tucks in here. Notice I've got my seam ripper handy. It happens. If you end up grabbing something inadvertently, don't worry, you can seam rip it out. Remember how we created this. You're starting to sew in this corner not here, in this corner right there, backstitch all the way across, stop at that corner. Same thing on the other end. Let's go over that again. That is one of the more difficult parts, but worth the effort. 
line up your lines line up your marked lines that's step one and pin pin from the fusible fleece side flip this over remember we're kind of going for a triangle I'm going to get things lined up. If you have Wonder Clips, if I had Wonder Clips, that's what I'd be using right now. Just an extra pair of hands. Smooth this out. Look at that triangle, right? That's kind of that look that we're going for that helps us know we're, we're on course. We're doing a good job. Let me just put that there. Just as an extra set of hands, let's flip over. I like what I'm seeing. I'm going to switch that. Let me smooth that out a little bit better. I think I could do better. There we go. And on this side. Be the boss of your fabric. That's what Tammy always tells us. Once you're sure everything is out of the way and is not going to take a tuck, I'm going to pin one more time. We sew a quarter inch again. Okay, so now we have this goofy looking thing. You're like, I must be doing it wrong. Nope, this is what it's gonna look like. You're on course, you're doing a great job. From the back side now, all right, we need to basically go in and, and secure these corners. And you're gonna repeat this step on all four corners. You're folding the fleece to itself so that you're exposing this portion. With that ruler, we want to have a ruler that has that 45 degree mark. And that's the line here. We rarely use these as quilters, right? We're usually using these lines and these lines, but we don't use those very often. We will use those now. Notice this is where we stopped, we, we, we started and, and ended. Run the 45 degree line, make sure you're project is folded and stacked right on top of itself and we're going to run that 45 degree line right on top of that edge there. I'm seeing this spot right here. That's what we're going to be drawing a line from right here. Right here. Let's pin that. We don't want that going anywhere. I'm just going to go sew that. You could mark everything. I like to mark and sew, mark and sew, mark and sew. I don't want things moving. So let's just sew that. Starting from that point, not off the edge. We're still starting at that place and backstitch a couple times. And at the end, backstitch again. That's your miter. That's this point of the placemat that will have the most stress on it. Using your same ruler, we will set our quarter inch uh, line where we just sewed the quarter inch line on the ruler and we'll simply trim. That's our first corner. You're repeating that for the other corners, right? You're just gonna go around and repeat that process. So I'll go ahead and do that until all four corners are complete.
Okay, we have mitered our corners. Let's trim any extra thread. Oh, this is my favorite part. Turning it out, turning it through. Just get any threads trimmed away. Because once they're in there, they're in there forever. All right, clean up a touch. This is where the point turner comes into play, but let's turn it through. Get it started. Oh, I love that. That is so cute. Okay, Clover Point Turner. Points, curves. Just get one. I use this thing. I didn't, <laughs> back in the day, I did shish kebabs. I did, uh, it's embarrassing what I did. And then someone said, you should have a point turner. And the one I bought actually just had a point. It, was, it didn't have the curve. I love this about Clover Notions. They solve problems. And I love that there are times you need to turn out a point. There's times where you want to smooth out a curve. Why not make a combo tool? It's fantastic. So you'll use that to press out your corners until you are satisfied what you're seeing. Get them all pressed out. So if you're gonna be joining us for this series and you don't have a point turner or maybe you have something at home, great. But if you don't, this is the one to grab. Now we'll just iron everything nice and smooth. Look at that. Our opening naturally, look at this. It just naturally wants to go under by the quarter of an inch. I don't know why, it just does. <laughs> and so we don't need to fuss with that. We can kind of establish our line. And it just, it just wants to go under the quarter of an inch, which we're thrilled for. Okay, once you're satisfied, it's pressed out, everything's beautiful. Time to, of course, add that stitching that not only kind of quilts everything, but closes our opening. And you can see we stitched very close to the edge here with the red. We also came back in and we did a little bit of quilting here. And that's more to just quilt it. It adds beauty, kind of looks embossed. We did our red thread in here. We used our pink thread there that you could use the pinks inside here as well. I'm just gonna go stitch that around. I wanna get that opening closed. And you know, generally we're, as quilters, we're used to a quarter inch seam, but not necessarily kind of that edge. That, that it's not even quite an, an eighth. It's maybe more of a 16th. Pick a spot on your foot. I'm gonna kind of pick that edge right there where I'm just looking at that spot so that I try to be consistent about where I'm sewing. And it's really right there that I'm just kind of looking. Try to stop in the miter. So you can see that is so easy to stitch around the edge. Quilt your heart as you desire. You might even want to add some quilting over here. We didn't. That's where we're going to put our beautiful plates and our cookie. And again, you know, feel free to grab those recipes. We have a sugar cookie and shortbread. And if you are inclined to share a recipe, I know our viewers would love that. We would love that too. 
We are so excited for you to join us for this series. Hey, maybe this is a great chance to grab a quilting friend and put something on the calendar every single month. Maybe you make one placemat, they make another, however you wanna do that. The whole point is community and fun. So thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you next month as we continue our new series, Tea and Cookies for Two.